right, uh, our warm up is like yesterday's warm up, but the work we did yesterday in class, I just wanted to go over it, and you can keep it. Uh, that's part of what we're going to be doing today. So I really want to make sure we tie a bow on yesterday. So if you weren't here, okay, uh, I'm going to explain this real quick before we do the warm up, okay? So on yesterday's assignment, so is everyone looking up here? Everybody. Looking up here. Number one, uh, if you remember yesterday, our first step is to move over the X, right? If I want to get Y by itself, see here, yeah. Uh, I, the opposite of positive 4X is minus 4X. Put it in front of the 3 because it's MX before B, right? And then if there's nothing in front of Y, you're done. You don't have to divide by anything. There's nothing to divide by, okay? Uh, on number two, though, okay, I get rid of the 4x, subtract it, put it in front of that 2. If you have a negative y, you must divide by negative 1, okay, to get rid of that negative sign. And that changes all these signs. So you got 4x minus 2, okay? So on number one and two from yesterday that you're checking right now on your page, okay, did you get those answers? If you weren't here, you're just soaking this up real quick. Uh, 3 and 4 here. To get rid of that 7x, you subtract it, put it in front of that 6. Then you divide by negative 3. Okay, the negatives cancel out here. This reduces to negative 2. Uh, number 4, you get rid of the 3x by subtracting it. You put it in front of the negative 8. Divide everything by 4 and simplify. Okay. And then the last two, on number five, you subtract the 2x, put it in front of the 9, and then divide by 3 to get this simplified answer. And then on number six, you subtract 2x, put it in front of the negative 3, and there's no last step because there's nothing in front of y. You don't have to divide by anything at that point. It's y equals, it's done. Okay? So that was just like a kind of a refresher before we do what we're doing today. Okay? We are going to do 5.1 notes here in a second, but today's warm-up, so if you didn't get this down, this is what we're actually writing down for today's warm-up, is all that I just showed you is what you're doing here on number one. So, what is my first step? What do I need to get rid of on the left side here? Okay, 3x by subtracting it. So, I'm going to put my 3x here for it. Minus 3x here, and on the other side, minus 3x. Okay, 5 minus 3x is not 2, it's not 2x, it's not negative 2 or negative 2x or 6 or whatever. Okay, remember, these do not combine because they're not the same thing. you got to put this in front. mx goes in front of the b. This cancels out, and I'm going to bring down negative 2y equals negative 3x plus 5. Okay, mx before b. Uh, last step, how do I get rid of the negative 2 in front of y? It's a coefficient that's being multiplied, so the opposite to, do, to, uh, opposite to get rid of it is to divide. By negative 2, everything gets divided by negative 2. So y equals negative 3 over negative 2. Whether you type it in your calculator or you know it intuitively, the negatives cancel out, and you have 3 over 2x. And then 5 over negative 2 is negative 5 over 2. I know some people were doing control enter to get negative 2.5. Uh, they're both 5. Okay. So that is our warm up. I'm going to pass out these notes. We're going to get started on this. Okay, so we're doing 5.1 notes. Uh, you should be able to identify what an inverse is, and you can find the inverse function three ways. Table, graph, and equation. Cool. So let's do this. Here we go. All right, at the top, you got that first blank. What are inverse functions? Okay. So what inverse functions are are functions that will undo, quote, unquote, another function. Okay. Uh, when you think of the word inverse, what does it make you think of? If you were to invert something, you would be doing what? Changing it. 
to the opposite. Okay, flipping it, switching it, inverting it, oppositing it. These are all related. Okay. Well, basically, you're undoing something. You're like inverting a shirt and turning it upside down. So that's an inverse function. Write this down. That's first blank. And then the second blank. How do we notate an inverse function? Is with this little negative one. So f inverse x. That little negative one is not an exponent. Okay. So make sure you write down both those blanks. Then we do have rulers because you're going to do a tiny bit of graphing, so you can make some straight lines, but not make helicopters. Please. Whoa. The only thing about it is that they're you know, opposite. Okay. All right, y'all ready for the next part? Now, this is going to be the easiest thing today. Okay, What does the inverse of a table look like? The ordered pairs, x, y, become y, x. Let me tell you. Biggest key word is that you're just going to switch x and y. Pretty much everything we do with inverses has to do with switching, flipping x and y. So literally, what you're going to do is put these x's in these y's, and put these y's in these x's. That's it. Okay? Uh, one thing we are going to do, I know yours says original and inverse, uh, but this is like the f of x. And then this is like the f inverse x. Okay. But anyways, let's go ahead and see this. Okay. So negative 3, 1 flips to become 1, negative 3. Negative 5, 4 flips to become 4, negative 5. Negative 1, 4 becomes 4, negative 1. 8, 3 flips to become 3, 8. It's all just a bunch of switching around, okay? On a table, it is super easy. Cool? If I gave you a table, you could do that. If not, I'd be crying because that should be walking apart. Okay? So, that's part of what we're doing. So, that's if it's a table. Now, can we move on to graphs? Has everyone got that down? What does the inverse of a graph look like? Okay, so it's, write this down. Two inverse graphs reflect each other over the line y equals x. Okay, so this diagonal line is y equals x. They are what we call symmetrical. Okay, They're, they have symmetry. Okay, and let's see here. So you're going to write, leave room to write two columns of stuff here off to the side. Okay, so let's pick an equation. We're going to use 2x plus 1. Okay, now real quick, do y'all know how to get an equation? Sorry, do y'all know how to get a table from an equation using your calculator? Hey, everyone's looking up here. Do you know how to take that equation, turn it into a table in your calculator? Where would you go in your calculator? Graph. Perfect. Okay. Let me just show you all real quick. 2x plus 1. Let me exit out of this. Uh, keep it. Sure, why not? 
Okay, this is going to take like a minute to load for some reason. It's like dial up internet. Y'all don't know what that is, do you? Back in the day, the internet plugged into the phone line, which I guess that doesn't matter because y'all don't use the phone lines either. All right, well, anyways, that nostalgia is over now. So you go to new document, don't save. Number two, add a graph. And what was our graph? 2x plus 1? 2x plus 1. Enter. First, you got to see it. Now, how do I get a table? What do I press? Control T. Remember, table starts with the T. It's Control T. Okay, so hit Control T. And there you go. Don't you get, like, some numbers there, right? So again, when you need points from an equation, graph it, control T, okay? And maybe we make a little note of that on our, our notes here. So here we go. So so again, I hit graph, and then I hit control T. Okay, so for 2x plus 1, I got these points. You could get other points, that's fine, but these are on that table. So if you want to just write these ones down, that's fine. And then you want to plot those points. This is where your ruler is going to be useful because I want you to draw a straight line on there, on that graph. Okay. So plot negative 2, negative 3, 0, 1, 2, 5. Once you plot those three points, connect them with a nice straight line and label it f of x, okay? Okay, see, so this is just basic graphing. Take an equation, get a table, plot the points, draw the equation, draw the graph. Okay, now, what do I do with that table to get myself some new points that are inverse? What do I do with the, the x and the y? Flip it. That's it, right? So take, take that little table, give it a switcheroo, label it like this, f inverse x, with a little negative one. And just rewrite it, it's flipped around. Okay, so inverse flips them. And then can you graph those new three points on here? Everyone doing this? Original equation, original table, original graph. Then flip the table and now plot those new points. Here they are in purple. And use that ruler to make a nice straight line and label it F inverse X. Now you tell me, are those two lines reflecting on this diagonal red line? They look, they look like they have symmetry, like they are mirroring across that line. So it's like an X. Okay, that might have a couple steps, but could you do that? Could you take an equation, get a table, plot the points, flip the table, plot the new points? Ta-da! Okay, that is something you'll be doing on the assignment tomorrow. Okay, so flipping a table is not bad. Flipping a table and plotting points is not too bad. This next part takes a little bit of thinking, okay? So I get, I'll let y'all finish, finish that up. Uh, but at the bottom, we're going to do write these four steps to do the equations. Okay. Make sure you got those two straight lines, the blue and the purple one.
Okay, so here we go. Bottom of the page, there's four steps. First of all, what does the inverse of an equation look like? Write this down. It, uh, the inverse of an equation contains the inverse operations, and those inverse operations are adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing. You can write that off to the side, off to the right. Okay, here's your four steps, ready? Step one, to get an inverse equation, you take that original equation and you turn f of x into a y. So step one, original equation, f of x, write it as a y. Cool, everyone's write this down, right? Four steps at the bottom of the front page. Step two, like every inverse thing we've been doing today, you have to switch x and y f of x becomes y, switch x and y. Now, step three is why we did what we did yesterday. You gotta be able to solve for y. And then step four, you're gonna write that y as an f inverse x. The whole point of this is to get it into inverse function form, okay? On the back of these notes, we're going to try three examples together. But first, make sure you got these four steps written down. Flip it over to show me that you're ready for the back, please. Ready for the back. Here we go. Okay, so everyone's in the back. Please focus because you got to do this tomorrow on your own. So I need more people looking up here. Don't look, okay? Example one I give you an equation. Can you turn that equation into a table? Remind me, what do I do in my calculator? Where do I put it? Graph it first, look at the graph, and then hit what? Control T. Okay, so. Let's, let's revisit this. Those two x minus three. So I go to a new document. Don't save. Graph two x plus three, and then Control T. I have a table of values, right? Is it minus? My bad. That was an example of what not to do. So two x minus three. Thank you. Uh, control T. What? Doesn't do what? So your x, actually your x value is really thin. Like look look at it again. Like next to negative one, there is a one. It's very thin. Like I, I promise you, it's there. You don't see it. One more, two more, 
than the one that won. Yeah, I know it looks different than mine. That's why it's a bummer that I wish they matched perfectly. Um, but yeah, so there's your table. So back to the notes here. So you want to write this table out. So let's go ahead and put one, two, three. It's negative one, one, three, five. All right, now, what do I do for that inverse? Just flip the whole table, right? You can do it now if you want to, but in the notes, it's going to do that last. Uh, here's what you're going to do now. Plot those four points on that graph, okay? So everybody, go ahead and plot one, negative one, put a point there. Two, one, put a point there. Three, three, put a point there. Four, five, put a point there. It should look like these four points. Right, so y'all can get the table, y'all can plot the points, use that ruler, make a straight line, label it f of x. Okay, so this is all stuff we did on the front side. And then I'm going to show you how to do what we were talking about just now with the equation. So everyone's got the first line drawn, labeled f of x, all is well. Okay, now, everybody, this is important. This is, this is brand new. I have not showed you this yet. So everyone looking over here. Look, look, look. Okay. Step one that we wrote on the other side of this paper. You take this equation and you turn f of x into a y. First step, okay? So first step, make that y equals 2x minus 3. Okay? First step's always easy. Just turn f of x into a y. That's it. Okay? And you wrote this on the other side of the page. Step two is you switch x and y. So this y becomes an x. This x becomes a y. Just like that. Everyone with me? Second step, switch X and Y. All right. Now, step three is the hard part. you got to solve for Y. Now, look at Y. There's a 2 and a minus 3. Which one do I need to get rid of first? What do you think? The loner, minus 3. How do I get rid of a minus 3? What's the opposite? Positive, or plus 3 on both sides. So, plus 3. And this plus 3 goes after the x. Cool. So now I have x plus 3 equals 2y. How do I get rid of that 2? Divide by 2. You're going to divide both sides by 2. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Now notice how I'm making the whole left side one big fraction. That's fine. Now, do you see how y is by itself? That's what I wanted. Y is by itself. Step four, my final step, is I write it as inverse, an inverse function. So y is f inverse x equals x plus 3 over 2. Okay? You have to be able to do this. Okay? These are the four steps from the front side. Again, f of x turns into y, switch x and y, divide, or, uh, solve for y, and then turn it into an inverse. Okay, almost done. Your last couple steps here. I need you to flip this table and plot the points on the graph for me. Okay, so maybe you already did this part, but if you flip that table, you get negative 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 4. 
And then can you plot these purple points on the graph for me, please? Plot those new four points and label it as F inverse X, which has two lines. And doesn't that look symmetrical across the diagonal line Y equals X? It does. So you show those two lines. Those two lines, plot all the points on both tables. You know, those symmetrical lines across that diagonal line, y equals x. It's kind of a lot, but it's a lot of just switching around and stuff, right? Now, preview to tomorrow. Could you do something like that on your own? Okay. Now we're, we're gonna. Do, do, there's two more examples to do, so we'll see if we can get, get it in before the end of the period. Okay. Uh, you understand this? You understand this? Sure. Right, real quick. Sign out to the pass. Uh, let's do example two. Ready? Okay. Example two. Now, again. You put this into the calculator, graph it, control T gives you a table. So I'll cut to the chase. When you when you plug it in to the calculator, hit control T, this is the table you get. So go ahead and write this down. On example two. And once you get those points, can you plot it on your uh, graph? Okay, so that's what it's supposed to look like. There's a little error on there. Negative 2, 4, 0, 5, 2, 6, and 4, 7. If you plotted the points from the table correctly, you're good. Okay, now let's go to that equation. Step one, what do I do to this f of x? What, is, what letter does it become? Y, okay? Then, what do I do with X and Y? Switch them. Okay, I'm telling you, every time you got these equations, that's your first two steps, right? F of X turns into a Y, switch X to Y. Now, the, the next part, solving for Y is what takes some thinking, okay? So let's think about this. If I'm solving for y, what do I need to get rid of first? The 5 or the 2? The loader 5. How do I get rid of a positive 5? Subtract 5. Yeah, so let's do that. So we switched x and y, and now we... Subtract 5 here, subtract 5 here, and it goes after the x. So x minus 5 equals y over 2. To solve for y, how do I get rid of it divided by 2? What's the opposite? Multiplying by 2. So times 2 times 2. Now, one way to think about it is everything gets multiplied by 2, like this. And then you want to distribute that. What's 2 times x, and what's 2 times negative 5? So 2 times x is what? 2x, and then 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Okay? Last step, that y needs to become an inverse function. Uh, and just like last time, can you flip that table around and plot those new points on the table over here, on the, uh, sorry, the graph over here?
So again, flip the table, plot the new points. You should have two graphs that are symmetrical across that diagonal line y equals x. Okay. Yeah. Say that again? Oh, are oh, you talking about on your table? Like, so if they picked one, it would be a, a fraction. They're just avoiding, or they're avoiding decimals. So like, if you did it on your calculator, it'd be like one, 5.5. Which is, you can graph that, it's just, it's easier to use points on the grid. Yeah. And I would suggest just use points on the grid so that you don't, you know, half is like so, not a huge deal, but it's, you know. Um, yeah, I would, I don't mind if you, like, if, when you're writing your own table, go ahead and write the decimal ones, that's fine. But if you want to, you can just skip the decimals and only write the ones that are whole numbers like that. Yeah. Either way is fine. As long as it's legit in the table. Uh, it'll work. Okay. Now the last one. I'm going to give it to you here. If you were to plug this in the calculator, you'd get this table. You plot the points, you get this graph. You follow all the steps we normally do, you get that equation, flip the table, plot the points, and you'll see that they actually are the same line. Uh, again, I think you get it by now, so I'm just showing you this in case you want to just finish up the notes, okay? So this is all we're doing today. That's example three, okay? Again, on, e on the equation, f of x turns it to y, switch x and y. You get rid of a plus six by subtracting six to both sides. You put it afterwards. Then you have to divide by negative one. Changes all the signs. And then y becomes inverse. Okay. So make sure you get down these notes, all three examples. Tomorrow you're going to have to do this on your own. So make sure you have these good examples written down. That way you'll be successful when we do it tomorrow. All right. Here we go.